Get in, nerds. We're playing Victoria 3. We are going to start a new run as Japan. Um, I am going to take a look at the game rules just to make sure we're doing everything the way we mean to be. AI yeah, behavior towards players standard. AI yeah, aggression standard. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all. That's all I need. All right. I did that. I, I did leave Iron Man off. Uh... It's just kind of a, a necessity of recording. Um, anyway, let's get into it and start talking a little bit about what is going on in Japan in 1836. So, uh, in this period, Japan is under the Tokugawa shogunate. Uh, Tokugawa Ienari is, I want to say, the like tenth or eleventh of the uh, of the Tokugawa shoguns. Um, that dynasty has been ruling for about, uh, I'm going to say, 200-ish years uh, since the end of the Sengoku period. Uh, and there is technically an emperor, but he doesn't have any power. So he's not listed here. The leader is the shogun. Um, as you can see, our politics are pretty difficult. Uh, the shogunate, which is the landowners under, uh, defaulting to the landowners, is a massively powerful interest group. Um, and our other groups are the samurai, the Buddhist monks, and the heimin. Uh, in other words, the, the armed forces, the devout, and the rural folk. Um, marginalized groups are the intelligentsia, we don't have any of them, basically. Uh, the petite bourgeoisie, the industrialists, and the trade unions. Trade unions are going to be marginalized for a long time. But it's rare for a nation to start the game with marginalized industrialists and marginalized petite bourgeoisie. Uh, and this is because we have a massive, pretty much completely agrarian economy. So one of the things I'm going to be showing you in the course of this run is how to build up an economy from scratch, basically. As you can see here, we have a about the most reactionary system a country can have, with one exception, and that is we don't have slavery. Um, we also have isolationism and closed borders, which is a really interesting combination. It means that we're not going to be able to use trade to build up our economy at all. So we're going to have to do all of our uh, economic development ourselves using our internal resources. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, because of isolationism, though, we have a huge uh, barrel full of authority to work with. Um, this gives us extremely reduced uh, declared interests and reduced technology spread, but a massive increase to taxation capacity. Um, add the 15% tax spread penalty to the... 10% uh, tech spread penalty from censorship, and we are going to have very little tech spreading. And that's going to be a problem, because at the beginning of the game, we have pretty weak technology overall. Um, we do start with most of the uh, Tier 1s in production. Uh, we have enclosure, manufactories, shaft mining, and distillation, as well as steelworking and prospecting. So we're capable of building... Mines. We're capable of building basic industry, steel industry, uh, agriculture, and food industries, but we don't yet have access to a lot of the stuff we're going to need pretty fast. Lathe is the technology that unlocks the second tier of production methods for our main industrial buildings, our textile mills, our furniture manufacturers, and our glassworks. So that's going to be a big priority, but it's not going to be the first priority. And you're going to learn why in a second. Here's our military tree. Uh, we've got navigation, dry dock, and admiralty. But we don't yet have paddle steamer. Uh, so we're not even close to the tier 2 navels. But for the tier 2, but for the land techs is where we're really rough. We have standing army and military drill. This gives us access to the professional army, uh, army model here. And we have gunsmithing and we have artillery. So we technically can field an armed force that can fight. Uh, or we will be able to once we get proper uh, gunsmithing industry built up. But uh, 
we don't even have the technology that unlocks line infantry, the tier two of the uh, barracks primary production method. Uh, so uh, basically the first thing we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to rush immediately up for Napoleonic Warfare. Um, this is going to give us line infantry and this is going to give us mobile artillery. We do have cannon artillery available. That's the first of the artillery production methods. But we're going to need this in order to be even viable. And it is theoretically possible that I might even go directly into army reserves and up to general staff after that. Although in order to make use of general staff, I need to first get percussion cap to have munitions plants. Because general staff unlocks skirmish infantry. Skirmish infantry and mobile artillery is where the European powers start in 1836. Skirmish infantry, though, costs ammunition here. And ammunition needs to be produced by uh, munitions plants. And munitions plants, in order to function, need explosives, which can only be produced by chemical plants here in intensive agriculture. So that's going to be difficult. As you can see, we're uh, rising in technology very slowly. We're only getting the baseline 50 tech. Uh, we do not have any universities at game start. So we're going to need to build those too. Uh, in society here, we've got pretty weak starting techs. We've got uh, over on the left here, we've got bureaucracy and urban planning. This is uh, an absolute necessity. It does give us iron frame for construction sectors. We don't currently have any iron mines, but we can build them. Um, we've got centralization, international trade, law enforcement, international relations, and colonization, interestingly. But currency standards is definitely going to be a priority because per capita taxation is going to be a priority if we can make that happen. Um, stock exchange will be important as well. Over here on the right, uh, we are missing... We do have academia, thankfully. Um, but we are missing everything else from over here. Including we can't get medical degrees. Uh, we don't have medical degrees, so we can't get charity hospitals. We're probably going to look for romanticism probably at some point. Romanticism is the easiest thing to switch off of traditionalism from uh, in the economy sense, and it requires romanticism. Uh, interventionism requires us to already not have serfdom, and uh, laissez-faire is pretty much the same. So, oh, and we can't even have isolation either. Okay, so laissez-faire is going to be impossible to, to get for now. Um, so yeah, so, but agrarianism, the rural folk like, and if we can get them to share some power with the, uh, no, uh, to share power with the shogunate, that will be possible. So that's one thing we're going to do. Uh, another thing we're going to do is work on getting our army model over to professional, because here's the, the other thing about peasant levies. Present levies are going to lock us in to either line, uh, hold on, one of these, maybe it's the conscripts, yes, okay, here we go, um, cons conscription centers cannot go above line infantry for uh, while professional army is not next, or rather while peasant levy is the army model. So what that means is that we're basically going to be locked into only having our barracks be effective. And I think the same is true for... Yeah, you can't have artillery in your conscription centers while you have peasant levies either. So that's going to be really, really uh, difficult for us to maintain any kind of... Uh, any kind of uh, military strength while we don't have those things. Um, we are going to do colonial resettlement in colonization. Most of the interest groups are going to support that. Yeah. Well, actually, no. The Shogunate don't care for that one bit. Hold up. Why is the head of the Shogunate so mad? He's not mad. He's a pacifist. Oh, and pacifists hate colonization. Okay, interesting. And he's 16. Oh, gosh, he's going to be around forever. Hmm. Maybe I should try to get over to National Militia. Actually. 
Okay, new plan. We are <laughs> we're improvising here. Um, we are currently researching mandatory service, and it looks like national militia is going to be completely viable for us. That's also going to save us a barrel full of cash. So I think we're actually going to do that. Uh, all right, so on the reform agenda, we're going to have some very modest reforms. We're not going to do anything to start out. We're not going to rock the boat at all. We're going to go to uh, National Militia, once that's available. We're going to go to, and if I do this, uh, the, where's my armed forces here? The armed forces will be chill with it. Are the armed forces also led by a pacifist? Uh, I'm not sure, um, but we'll find out. Anyway, one other thing I wanted to draw your attention to, we have some alternate, uh, some, some country-specific flavor uh, ideologies here. Uh, particularly paternalistic, I think, is the default for the, the, sh the landowners. Um, so this doesn't do anything specific. Paternalistic, stratocratic, and patriarchal. But um, the samurai have, in addition to the base uh, army, the base armed forces ideologies of jingoist, uh, loyalist, and patriotic, they also have bakufu. Um, this means they're strongly for monarchy and oppose any form of republic below presidential. Uh, they're prominently, they are uh, for serfdom and dislike any form of land ownership that uh, allows anyone other than the landowners to have most of the power, and they're very strongly autocratic. Um, that's going to be a very stable state uh, in the early part of the game, and we'll see what happens later. Uh, both our shogun and his heir are traditionalists, and our armed forces leader is a traditionalist, so this will be really interesting. Um, the Buddhist monks have Buddhist moralist. This is a little different from... The Western uh, moralist, in that they endorse theocracy. In fact, they like it better than monarchy. So theoretically, I could switch from monarchy to theocracy uh, with the help of the Buddhist monks. All right. So right now, though, I think we're going to go ahead... And if I did this, I would get a small batch of radicals among the armed forces, but I would get just a ton of government uh, legitimacy. On the other hand, I could rush the Meiji Restoration if I try to flip over to National Militia and the... But it doesn't say the armed forces will be upset about this. So I think I might be able to make it happen. Um, nevertheless, I'm going to try to get that ticking... Uh, that ticking loyalism. And by the way, I don't know why... I don't know why... Oh, because they don't dislike... Because the armed forces don't dislike national militia any more than they dislike peasant levy. Okay, so I'm going to do this in order to avoid a petition from the samurai to go to professional army when I'm not ready to do that. All right. That's going to give us some radicals, but it is what it is. From there, let's talk about our productive capacity. We have... Uh, a completely isolated market. We are completely self-sufficient. Um, I'm just going to change up some production methods. These are going to be cargo ports. Uh, those are going to provide a little bit of extra uh, infrastructure and provide some clippers uh, and use up some clippers. Our rice farms are going to produce all fruit all the time. Our livestock ranches can't go to butchering tools yet because we don't have any tools in our market. Um, so, for rural, we've got a bunch of rice farms and livestock ranches. We've got some dye, tea, and tobacco and silk plantations. We've got some logging camps, which we're not producing hardwood out of. All of, but we probably will eventually. we got some fishing wharves. I'm going to go to trawlers. That's going to give us maximum fishing output. 
Um, virtually all of our rural industry is run by merchant guilds. This is going to provide us a barrel full of shopkeepers. That's going to make our uh, petite bourgeoisie stronger. And then for the urban, we have some textile and furniture industry, some glassworks, some paper mills, and some shipyards. And that's it. We have no food industries. We have no tooling workshops. We have no steel mills, no arms industries, no universities. Uh, and a, a pretty modest number of government administrations. I'm going to keep these on uh, clerical production methods because I don't necessarily not want... That was a lot of negatives altogether. I think it's fine if the clergy is strong. We are producing the luxury versions of some of these goods here using the higher tier materials. We are going to keep doing that. Um... For development, we've got 100 levels of barracks-ish. That's going to be costing us a total of about 7 and a quarter k wages. Uh, and then for construction sectors, we have two, and both of them are working wooden frame construction. So the first thing we need to figure out is what does our wood situation look like? Because wood is going to be the thing that's supporting our construction sectors. Uh, right now, we have logging camps producing... Now, furniture manufacturers using 20 hardwood and locking camps producing 42 hardwood. So we can switch that up if it's possible. Uh, no, because we have the minimum number of uh, of logging camps producing hardwood in order to be producing any hardwood at all. Um, anyway, that's fine. So... A priority, though, is going to be getting our construction sectors up, but also getting our proper industrial materials into production. So, these cost 25 fabric and 75 wood per level. Our wood situation is our demand is actually already over our supply. So, building up our wood frame building capacity is going to be pretty difficult. But it's not going to be impossible. And we're going to go ahead with it. We're going to build two more levels of construction industry in our most populous states. And that's going to be what we start with. I'm just going to keep us on speed one here uh, while we see what's going on. For budget, we've got a huge pile of authority. We need to use this budget. Um, the traditional hyper-reactionary budgetary method is to put taxes on clothes, furniture, and green. That would cost all of our uh, authority, but it would be just enormously uh, repressive for the average person. I'm not necessarily going to do that, I don't think. Um, I'm going to be with a, go with a more standard uh, consumption tax structure. Okay, what do we have? All right, we have cotton gin spreading to us, which is the uh, the must-do one for uh, production. We have mandatory service, which is the one we're researching. That's a good get. And we have medical degrees spreading. That's pretty all right. Um, the reason cotton gin was what we had to have spread to us is because it's the only tier one tech that we have available to us. Um, so we had to have cotton gin spread, and lathe is going to be next. So, for other consumption taxes, let's go with liquor, tea, porcelain, uh, and I'm going to leave luxury clothes and luxury furniture untaxed for now. Uh, I think the samurai are actually going to completely lose their uh, influence once we go to national militia. Um, so I'm not... But nevertheless, I'm not going to do any suppressing right out of the gate. Because I don't think I need to. In fact, we're going to be doing another pretty pretty chill run overall. So what's next on the docket after construction? The next thing is we're going to use even more wood by building some tooling workshops. 
These are going to be in our capital of Kansai uh, State. We're going to build two levels of that, and at the same time, we're going to build us some iron mines. Those are going to go in Shikoku here. I'm going to intersperse them, and what that's going to do is it's going to let us put some of our construction sectors on iron frame construction, while at the same time having some of our tooling workshops on uh, iron tools, which I believe we do have access to right now. Um, because we don't have steel mills or the mechanical tools technology yet, we cannot get more uh, steel. Uh, steel. We cannot use steel tools to get more tools. Once that's done, we're going to grab some of our logging camps and switch over to uh, the sawmills production method. This is going to cost us a pile of those tools, but it's going to produce a bunch more wood, and that will allow us to have more construction industry. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get those queued up. I'm going to spread them out a little bit. We'll do them in Tohoku and Chugoku. And then we'll put some in Kyushu and Shikoku. So these are all of our main areas. We're not necessarily going to build up the Ryukus that much. That area is really low population. Um, and Hokkaido is super duper low population. Uh, it's going to take us a long time before we can colonize the rest of Hokkaido. We are going to need to do that. Um, and the reason we're going to need to do it is because that's where our gold is going to come from. And gold is of critical importance to the early game. Going to put us up to speed 3 here. Uh, actually, no. I'm going to keep us down at speed 2. So, the British responded to the opium ban. They are going to go to war with Great Ching, our neighbors, to uh, fight to open their market and force them to eat Great Britain's delicious, delicious opium. And as you can see, we're developing a solid base of loyalists here. That's very good for the early game. Uh, standard of living is pretty okay. It's actually pretty solid for our middle and upper strata, but um, that'll be that'll be different. It'll take some time for that to get going. Ugh, I'm thinking about whether or not... I am going to need to hand manage a lot of our construction in the early game. Um, I may also want to pull some construction sectors up from the bottom, depending on what it does to our uh, wood market, because this is continuing to increase, and I think it's going to go up even further as we go along, but I might be able to squeeze one more in here before the tooling workshops. Let me see, the tooling workshops are going to use 30 wood per level. We've currently got 1.36 thousand demand for wood. Uh, and we're about to have 75 more. So we can actually sneak in one more, I think. Maybe even two. Uh, if we do two more, that's going to increase by 225. It's going to put us at 1.6, which is actually manageable. Okay, cool. As you can see, we're very slowly producing the amount of construction that we need to start producing. Um, the traditionalism economic system gives us 25% private construction allocation. That means that 25% of our construction goes to building the private construction uh, sector, and the funding for that gets pulled out of our investment pool, uh, and the rest is going to go to the government construction sector, which is being paid for out of the treasury. Uh, another important thing to note here, just so as you're aware, is that um, as you can see here, we've got a line item at the bottom here for, uh, or up here for unrealized taxes. And the reason that's happening is because we have a huge pool of provinces, i.e. all of them, all of the ones that are incorporated, that are doing a big tax evasion on account of the government is not physically large enough to ensure that all of the taxes are collected. Um, this is a problem we're going to need to solve, but it's not going to be economically viable to solve it right now. 
Um, and the reason is this. In order to build more government administrations, we're going to need uh, a lot of paper. Government administrations use paper. We currently have the filing cabinets method. Um, we're going to need the standardized filing system method in order to produce enough taxation capacity for us to get back the cost. Uh, currently, government admin produces 10 taxation cap. Uh, it's going to produce, I think, 15 on here? So this is producing 260. It's going to increase by 390. It, yes, it's, it's going to go up by... Yeah, I think it's going to be 15 per level. It's going to go up to 25 taxation capacity per level once we unlock this. And this is pretty far down the tree from where we are. Uh, it's over here in society under central archives. So technically we could go there now, but it'll be super duper slow because we have a bunch of tier one technologies that we haven't unlocked yet. Um, and we can't really at this point afford to go buck wild on technologies because uh, we need to be efficient about things. Uh, another priority for us is going to be to get our uh, innovation up. We currently are outputting 50 innovation, and our capacity from literacy is 73. So in order to achieve that, we're going to need about 8 levels of... or no, about 24 levels of universities, because we don't yet have empiricism, which is the... Or no, we don't yet have dialectics, which is the production method that unlocks philosophy departments. And uh, the base production method for universities, excuse me, is scholastic education. And that only produces two innovation per uh, level of the building. So at the bottom of our tech tree, we're going to queue up a bunch of these in all of our main provinces on Honshu, uh, Kyushu, and Shikoku. And then... That's going to be a total of seven levels, and then I think we'll build some up in a high population province, but not necessarily our capital, because that's going to make our uh, intelligentsia stronger, and we don't necessarily want that for a run that's not going to be reform-focused. Uh, unless we decide to, but for now, that's how we're going to do it. This is... Uh, a total of 10 levels of universities. We could probably do more. In fact, we will be doing more eventually. And we'll put one more in Kansai, one more in Chumu, one more in Shukoku. Uh, and we'll put one in the Ryukyus. Uh, so that's going to be 14 total levels. It's a start. From here... We're still not producing all that much fruit, which is a surprise, because all of our rice farms are producing fruit. Um, that's a shame. But it is what it is. So other things tools are going to allow us to do are, number one, they're going to allow us to operate iron mines, which cost five tools per level. They're going to allow us to switch over to butchering tools for our livestock ranches. Those cost 30, because uh, those cost five tools per level. Uh, they're going to allow us to use precision tools in our furniture manufactories to produce additional luxury furniture. That's going to take t uh, 10 tools per level. And, oh, interesting. Textile mills don't take any tools, but um, the level 2... Oh, interesting. Dye workshops doesn't cost any either. Sewing machines does, but that's really far down. Um, none tools. What about lathes? Yes, lathes for furniture are going to cost 10 tools per level. So tools are, use, tools are useful for a lot of things. Uh, so that's why we're going that method. Right away we have a movement to enact tenant farmers on the part of basically everyone that's not the current ruling class. Um, I'm not worried about that. That's something uh, other people can worry about. It's causing a small amount of radicalism, but it's also causing... Uh, but it's not, that's not really a problem. This level of radicalism is really low. Alright, alright, alright. Tea time. I always skip Death March. It's not that I don't like Death March, it's just that I only notice that Dreaming of the Future is looping pretty, when I've been hearing it for quite a bit, 
So I tend to skip Death March because it sounds pretty similar. Um, and I'm tired of it. So no offense to Death March. Uh, it's not a bad song by any stretch of the imagination. So another thing we're going to need is arms production. Uh, we're going to put our arms manufactories in Chulu. I'm going to do two levels here. Once we switch over to uh, National Militia, we're going to have 35 levels of barracks, essentially. Uh, and we'll build up five levels in the Ryu Caves for later use. Um, we're eventually going to need a lot more arms industry, but not too much more, so I'm going to put another set in Shogoku. This is going to give me maximum flexibility in terms of changing up the production methods. As always, I'm going to keep my arms industry is not super duper profitable. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing that is because I want them to be able to flex upward in times of war, which is something they're going to need to do. Uh, looks like our private sector is building fishing wharves. That's just fine. We're nearly done with our first level of tooling workshops in Kansai uh, State. I think... See, I don't... I don't... I know they're called provinces, and I know there are smaller subdivisions called prefectures, but I don't know if these correspond to prefectures or... Uh, to, sorry, to provinces, or if I'm just making that up. I'm pretty sure Kanto is a province, but um, that's something I absorbed through cultural osmosis. I haven't double-checked it. Um, we also have one interest we can declare. Buddhist monks are now powerful. Excellent. That's just fine. Uh, and in terms of declaring interests, let's go ahead and declare an interest in Manchuria. That's nearby. On the other hand, it would be... Actually, no. That's not the right play. The right play is to declare an interest in Rhine. Because that will give us access to the European powers. Uh, the head of our rural folk has retired, and the current head is a royalist. That's excellent. Um, that's just fine. Nothing problematic about that. Um, so, that's the run. That's what we're going to be do doing. That's what we're currently doing. I've had fun. I hope you all have had fun. And I'll see you all on the other side.